So let's talk about blocking. I've made a mini shawl here so we can demonstrate. Uh, I'm going to take my unblocked shawl. I generally do not weave in the ends until after I've blocked the shawl just because I don't want them to pull out accidentally if I don't leave enough of a tail or something. So I'll leave my ends. I'm going to take a little bit of room temperature water. You don't want it icy cold and you don't want it very hot. I'll put a tiny bit of wool wash in it and then I take my shawl and I soak it. And I want to get it all in there. You don't want to rub, you don't want to squish it and wring it. You want to treat the yarn as gently as possible, so just very gently push it in there. And then you let it sit in the water for at least 15 minutes. You could do it overnight if you wanted to. Our little mini shawl that we soaked earlier has been in the water probably for about 45 minutes. You don't need to do it for that long, 15 minutes. I would say 15 minutes minimum. You really want all of your fibers to soak. So first we need to talk about tools for blocking. One of the most important tools in my personal opinion are blocking wires and they come in a lot of different types. I have this set that has these mini ones which is what I'll be blocking our tiny shawl on. But they actually come in some longer lengths too. These are sort of a mid-length. They package them curled like that, but you can see they're probably about, I don't know, three quarters of a meter, two feet long, 24 inches. I don't know what that is in centimeters, sorry. Then there are these long ones that are more like a meter long. Bring them in and out of the frame, see them? So these are, you can see, they're pretty flexible. Boing, boing. Uh, they're also the more rigid type, like this one, much more rigid. You can see it's thicker. Let me get one of these others. You can see how much thicker uh, the more rigid one is. I have used these so much that I'm not sure if it shows in the video, but this one is actually quite crooked. I still use it all the time and it works great. But today, as I said, we're going to use those shorter ones. Blocking wires are not particularly expensive. I highly recommend, if you're going to be knitting shawls, to invest in a set. I use mine all the time. So there are my blocking wires. The other tools we'll need is something to block them on. I have a set of these blocking mats that all fit together. You've probably seen some of the children's sort of puzzle blocks like this. Some people actually use their kids' blocks. You can, before I got these blocks, I used to lay out bath towels on carpet and put the pins right into the carpet. That works as well if you don't want to invest in these. I've never tried doing it on my bed, but I know there are people who do it on their bed as well. There are those large sort of folding blocking mats that some places sell. I think those are great for jumpers, cardigans, things that you don't need to pin as much, but I find they're just a little too stiff to stick pins in, which we need to do a lot of when we're blocking a shawl. We need a towel to squeeze some of the excess water out of our shawl and our pins. So let's get started. I'm going to take my mini shawl out of the water. I'm going to very gently squeeze a little bit of the excess water out. Let's bring it into the frame for you. Squeezing the excess water out. I'm not wringing, I'm just gently squeezing excess water. Now I'm going to lay it in my towel. And I roll it up in my towel. And this will help me to squeeze out a little bit more water without um, injuring your wool. So when I'm doing a larger shawl and I use a bath towel to do this, at this point, once it's rolled up, I actually step on it on my bathroom floor and that really gets some water out. This is a little small to step on, so I'm just gonna squeeze it. It's nice to get that water out because shawls will dry pretty quickly once we get our water out. So now we have our slightly damp shawl. Don't need the towel anymore. And I'm going to get the water out of our way. We have our slightly damp shawl. 
We have our blocking wires, our blocking mat, and our pins. So let's start by weaving in our first blocking wire along this finished edge that has the uh, I-cord bind off on it. I'm going to weave it in on the side, th that little ridge that's just between the bind off and the first garter ridge there. And I do this very frequently. I just about every stitch, I'm just weaving in and out, in and out. This part, I'll be honest with you, it's my very least favorite part of blocking, putting these wires in. But if you want your finished shawl to look sharp and clean, you know, put in a good audiobook or watch something nice on TV that you enjoy, put on your favorite music and just get lost in what you're listening to or watching and get this job done because it is a very important part. So there we are, it's woven in. And you can see when I tug on it, I guess there's a bit there where maybe I didn't do it so perfectly, but when I tug on it, it's sort of pulling equally on all those stitches. If I had not done it that frequently, we'd have a section here that might be coming down too low. It wouldn't give me a nice clean straight edge. Now I'm going to do it up along this garter stitch edge. And here again, I go into every single one of these garter bumps. I don't go into the ones on the absolute edge because those will pull out and look sloppy. I want to go a couple of stitches in. So I'm going to go along this line right here. Hold it in my hand. I don't know how you guys can see it best. And I am just going under each one of those pearl bumps as I go up. As I'm doing this, I'm always trying to keep track of the other wires that I've already put in so they don't slip out. You want to make sure that's somewhere in the middle. Uh, actually, this set that I'm using does have these little rubber tips. If I were a very efficient knitter, I would probably make sure those tips were on after I threaded it through. I have to admit, I don't often remember to do that. But if you're more organized than I am, then perhaps you will remember to do that, and that is probably a very helpful thing to do. All right, that's through. I'm actually going to put it straight through that I cord too. And there I am. I've got two wires in on two sides. And now this is the easiest side to do. This is the side with our yarn over increases. So we just weave it in and out of the yarn overs. I always save this one for last because it is the easiest to do. And because I've already got two wires in, this is the time when I'm most likely to drop one of those wires out by mistake. So working on the easiest side last makes sense because that's going to go quickest and probably be least likely to drop a, a wire. So in and out, weaving in and out of those eyelets. You can see how much more quickly this is going than the other two sides. And there we are, we're done. I'm also going to stick that, poke it right through that I-cord bind off. So there we have three wires in our three sides of our triangle. Now it's time to do the fun part, the blocking. Um, when I'm using these blocks, I eyeball. I don't measure with any kind of measuring tool. You can if you'd like. I find that shawls are flexible fabric, and I don't think it's necessary to be that precise. But if you prefer, you absolutely may measure you know, distances, lengths, that sort of thing. What I do is I eyeball along the edge. So this, when I go to pin it, I'm going to try to make sure that this corner is about the same distance from here as this corner. So I'll put the first pin in on this corner here. And now I'm going to really tug it. Don't be afraid to pull on your knitting. This is strong wool that we're using. It's going to tolerate this, no problem. And I'll put my next pin in. Now before I pin all through here, I want to get my other corners set. I like to get all of the 
corner set first, the edges, and then I go and I start to fill in. Because generally adjustments do need to be made. This should be a right angle here, so again I'm going to eyeball the distance here as I pin. Really tug it. I can see my wires are starting to bow, that's okay. We're going to put more pins in to fix that later. We are mindful here again of not losing our wires and having them pull out. I've certainly done that plenty of times in my day. And put a pin there to hold that. Let's see, get that end out of the way. So now I've got my three points in. Now I can start to fill out these edges. So I think I'll go up to this high cord edge first. Put them about, well, depending on the size of the shawl and how many pins I have, frankly, and how well the wires and my blocking mats are behaving. Anywhere between an inch apart and maybe three inches apart, you use a lot of pins. Again, this is another one of those things that can be a little bit tedious, but it is absolutely worth it. Now I'm doing this diagonal edge. And once these pins are set, you can adjust them. I like to use these longer pins. I switched pins there because this one in my uh, pin holder was a little shorter than the ones with the yellow heads. So I like those longer ones. I find them much easier to block with. Okay, and now we have this last bowed side. And you can see I'm a little uneven there. I'm going to come back and fix that, but first I want to get this side set. Oh, this is where it gets tight, and my um, foam board, since I'm only using one of them, it might start to bow on us a little bit. Once you get all these foam boards together, they do it, but not too badly. So I'm really pulling. You can see it really wants to bow. It's really going to fight me. But a nice, tight block gives us a nice, crisp fabric. Especially if you're doing lace, it really opens things up. Now to keep this edge from doing what it's doing, I'm going to re-angle my pins. I'm going to put them at about a 45 degree angle along that blocking wire, and that will help to hold that down a little bit. Oops, I pinned it into the fabric. Well, you can see, if I just used pins instead of my blocking wires, do you see what's happening there? And even if I were to go again here, you're just gonna get that all along your edge. That's why blocking wires are such an important tool for this process. It's the best way to get a nice, clean, straight edge. And I'm just going to keep making little adjustments as I see necessary. I think maybe another pin here might be good. And there we have it. If you want, you can really pull on your points and pin out your points. Make sure that's nice and neat. That one's already got one in it. Maybe this one could stand to have one. And there we have it. Now we're just going to leave this and let it dry. I find, depending on the humidity level in your particular weather, these can dry in as little as two hours or maybe overnight uh, because it's, we've already taken a lot of the water out of the fabric and again, it's very thin yarn. They do dry pretty quickly, but do not unpin it until it is 100% dry. Um, it's really tempting to pull it off the mat before that, but try to keep it there, keep it pinned out until it is fully dry. And that's how we block.